Stan explained that this was not his understanding, but he would check it out and get back to me the next day. His call set off a bunch of suspicions for me that something was wrong. Surely I got a call from him around next night, but I have forgotten to tell him that midnight on a weekend was not my preferred time to talk. But I stayed on the line. This time here, his approach was slightly different. In the past 24 hours, he said, he had confirmed what I had told him. He felt confident that I knew all the characters involved here, and if he was going to get involved with this litigation, working with me was probably the best way for him and his colleagues to go. I didn't know Stan, but I knew David Bowie's by reputation and found the thought of working with him intriguing. He was actually one of the lawyers who had unknowingly helped shape my legal career. When I returned to Florida from my time studying abroad in the Czech Republic after my first year of law school, I had three weeks to kill before going back for my second year. My dad hooked me up with a law firm clerkship through a fishing buddy of his who had an admiralty lawyer in Jacksonville, who was an admiralty lawyer in Jacksonville. Having hired me only as a favor, the firm made it clear to me that on my first day that considering my lack of skills, they had no use for me, but wanted to help me out. They asked what kind of law I wanted to practice. I told them I wanted to be a trial lawyer they told me that there was a guy trying a case down the street for the next three weeks and they uh, said they would pay me if i wanted to go to court and watch him the next uh, i went to the trial and sat in the back of jacksonville courtroom that was filled with stacks and bankers boxes david bowie's represented an electricity company called florida light and power which was contract dispute i was the first person to arrive at the courtroom every day and watched everything he did for three weeks so he talks about knowing Stan Pottinger and having experienced David Bowies. Now, David Bowies is a Bowies Schiller Flexner, which I believe was created in 1997. Yeah, there you go. Chairman and managing director of Bowies Schiller Flexner since its founding in 1997. And oh my God, did he have some uh, big cases throughout that time, whether or not we're... we're going to get on to the early ones i think we are now here in 1991 to 1993 this is the first thing that piques my interest it says he's the counsel for federal deposit insurance corporation recovering 1.2 billion from companies who sold junk bonds to failed savings and loans associations now when i first read that i thought no not Drexel Burnham Lambert though he's not, not talking about that because if he was involved in like one of the biggest like sort of Ponzi scheme sort of things junk bond selling of crap in history that would be crazy what well, David Bowie did that is that what, what he did and yes it was it was it was exactly that so here's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation that he was uh, working for uh, during the time and here you go FDIC RTC file 6 billion lawsuit against Michael Mixon, uh, Milken, oh, um, other Drexel and Thrift industry officials over junk bond losses. And here is the filings by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation um, and the Resolution Trust Corporation. What's really interesting is these corporations ended up being the biggest uh, liability that Drexel, uh, Byrne and Lambert had. So they actually had a dog in the fight which was extremely strange i think it shows it in um oh, this document doesn't look like it's working very well does it uh it i think it shows it in in um uh this this document uh that's what would consist of lawyers um from the fdic Ah, in fact, we believe that the fdic and rtc may be among the largest creditors in the drexel bankruptcy so it's interesting that they themselves are then dealing with the Drexel bankruptcy um, like that. Now, the uh, next case that Bowie's um, is involved in, he's involved in two cases. He's involved in the Microsoft case, which is the antitrust litigation or whatever it's called, fraud litigation against um, Microsoft and Bill Gates. And that was very famous because it was a really hard one to win because, of course, Bill Gates brings out all his lawyers and David Bowie's won that. But he also um, represented Al Gore, 
when Al Gore challenged the Florida, Florida again, election results um, in 2000 that saw George H.W. Bush take the presidency and then the war on terror began. And that was all based upon hanging chads. That was the, the, the voting things that people showed their intentions to vote. But if it, if it was just like dip down a little bit, was that an intention or did was that an accident? Could that be? So, so that was what the hanging mm. chad was. No, I will not learn more. Um, but David Bowie's did other things. He's a really interesting person to go and look into. Let me uh, come out of, of that. So, um, oh, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Another wrong one. Another wrong one. And who represented Harvey Weinstein? Uh, of course, uh, David Bowie's um, mm. firm. And they got some badass people. Wait a minute. Where's that um, next firm? Oh, okay, okay, get out of the way. Here you go. On July the 11th, 2017, this is in the New Yorker, Harvey Weinstein's attorney, David Bowie, some law firm, Bowie, Schiller, Flex, and LLP, signed a contract with Black Cube, an Israeli private intelligence agency operated by former members of Israel's Mossad intelligence service. Black Cube have actually broken one of my computers, and I want the money back, personally. Um, the contract describes Black Cube's tactics and goals in its work for its clients, identified in other documents as Weinstein. The firm's first object as stated in the contract, was to uncover information that would help stop the publication of new negative newspaper stories, which sources said was a New York Times story focused on sexual misconduct allegations against Weinstein. Its second objective, objective was to obtain a manuscript of a book that sources identified as a memoir of actress Rose McGowan, who had uh, accused Weinstein of rape. That's a very interesting one. And David Bowie was, of course, involved in getting basically back if they say former Mossad they're not they're Mossad they're just Mossad they're just yeah. private Mossad and they're, they're inept one of the most inept companies in the world private intelligence companies in the world completely inept um I found them uh, their information being leaked in an article it was hilarious and then they basically uh made one of my computers go funky and blow up so so I mean <laughs> tit for tat that's what I say um the contract, which the magazine published on its own website, had uh, as a signatory a Weinstein lawyer, David Bowie, a Democratic Party stalwart who argued for marriage equality at Supreme Court and represented Al Gore in the disputed 2000 presidential um, elections. Now, it's really important to note that basically they used underhand methods in that, but that was not the only one he used underhand methods in, or, or weird methods in. David Bowie also represented Ferranos, and Ferranos was a weird one. This was where um, this woman who is a 19-year-old student claimed that basically Elizabeth Holmes claimed that she had uh, created a way to test blood samples at a much lower rate. You only needed a droplet of blood, and, and and, and they would be able to test for everything. But it turned out it was all a lie. She tricked everybody. She tricked all of the people who worked for her company. She tricked all of the board. I don't believe she tricked everybody, but that's what they say. And she tricked everybody. And David Bowie was set up to represent them after she had already been um, done. So she was already in loads of trouble. Loads and loads of it. it um, I'm not sure if it, it, it shows, uh, it says here, quite how much trouble she was in but she'd already been had loads of charges against her by this time and david bowie doesn't only go on to legally represent ferranos but he actually takes a role as a director while he's representing his companies under fire now who's on the board but senators and henry kissinger so why is henry kissinger on the board for ferranos when ferranos is a lie anyway and david bowie becomes a director when he's representing them which makes it a conflict of interest and none of it makes any sense and it kind of got like wiped over got yeah, yeah just amazing so I mean, this... everything's just a conflict of interest at every stage of this mm. isn't it? it it just yeah it's crazy <laughs> like that every time it just gets completely overlooked Yep, yep, completely overlooked. 